Well, another one of the Paradox games. And the first time viewers of these games, you might think that they are all the same. But in reality, well, they are actually not. And in this video, we're going to be discussing Crusader Kings 3 and whether it is worth it to buy right now, quite a bit of time after its release, and whether it is actually a good game to buy or not. So let's discuss that. And as always, I'm not going to be wasting any more of your time if you're just looking for the validation whether you want to buy this game or not. And I'm going to be answering the question right away. Yes, Crusader Kings is absolutely worth it. From now on, it became one of my favorite strategy games of all time. And yes, you should go and get this if you want the complexity, intrigue and depth in your strategy games. However, just be mindful that this game is not for everyone because it is complex, even though it's one of the easiest paradox games that they've ever released. So let's discuss some more details. So what is Crusader Kings 3? Well, Crusader Kings 3 is paradox grand strategy game, which is happening in middle to late medieval ages and encompasses the map consisting of Europe, the northern and central parts of Africa, Middle East, and some parts of Asia stretching all the way to India and China. For, at first glance, it's not dissimilar to any other paradox games like Europa Universalis or even Hearts of iron. However, the fundamentally this game is actually different. You see, despite this game being grand strategy and looking very similar to all the other games including the Tower War series, the fundamental of this game is different because you are not playing as a nations, you are playing as a characters. Yes, when you start a game you don't play as a nation, you play as its ruler. And your interactions are not happening usually with other nations, it's happening with other rulers and their vassals or, well, basically every other individuals. Which immediately transforms this game into the most grounded and most realistic strategy games that I've ever seen. And to also one of the more complex ones. You see, when you start the game, you can choose to control any nation that you want that existed in this period. And also you can actually choose not just to be as a ruler, but you can actually play as a vassal as well. But let's discuss what does this even mean. You see, entire map is divided into few different stages of division. And every single stage has their own ruler and own personality behind it. You see, the smallest divisions of the map are called baronies and that can also have cities in it. A few baronies unite and create the counties and, well, the count is actually controlling the smaller baronies and these barons or mayors are actually paying the part of their income to the count. The counties actually unite and create duchies and all of those counts collect all the resources from, well, the lower hierarchy rulers and they also pay to the duchy as well. And the duchies are also united into the kingdoms, which is ruled by the king. Well, king collects resources from the duchies and duchies collect resources from the counties and counties collect resources from the baronies. And even bigger divisions are empires, which consists of different kingdoms. And imagine how many people you have to interact if you're playing as an emperor or even as a king. And all of those individuals on every step of the way have their own goals, want their own things and have their own opinions and their own traits and characteristics. And your avatar has its own traits and characteristics as well. Meaning that they might like one thing and they might not like another things. They might be attracted to one things and not be attracted to other things. As a very simple example, your character can be greedy and if you are greedy, any action that involves spending money will cause distress to your ruler. And the higher the stress will be, there will be more chance that, that your ruler will just suddenly, well, die or gain some kind of very bad traits as well. You can also gain additional traits by investing in some kind of RPG tree, which is way too big to discuss right now. Plus you have to control your own dynasty as well, including your relatives, your wife that can actually go against you, your children, your brothers and things like that, that makes this game an intensely realistic political simulator as it should be. In this game, you are not an absolute ruler whose will is an absolute rule. People will be defying you right and left and they will be doing your own thing. As an example, as a king, I was pretty well loose with my vassals and they actually had the right to wage wars on their own. And because my kingdom was actually pretty powerful and pretty rich, 
suddenly I saw that my kingdom was actually expanding because my vassals were conquering more and more territories without me ever doing anything in the wars. And if you want, you can wage the wars on your own as well. The game does not have the military action uh, dissimilar to the other Paradox or even other strategy games. In this game, you don't have an active standing army, or if you do have, it's rather a bad decision to have because they cost quite a lot of money. Instead, each one of your territories that you directly control, which you can directly control as well, and each one of your vassals, they actually owe you a certain amount of taxes and a certain amount of people in case you will raise raise the army and when you need you just press raise the army your armies will go to the gathering point and you can send them whatever you want to wage your wars including wars for your vessels or your allies and in this game even ally system is actually different to anything else you see in every other game when you're allied with the nation you are allied with the nation and no matter who is ruling the country you're allied to it until the well, alliance will be dissolved. Here, the alliances are actually personal. As an example, you can make a personal alliance by marrying your character to a daughter or to a sister or to a close relative or to even the ruler of other state. And in this way, you can create an alliance. But when the wife of your avatar will die, this alliance will be dissolved because you will have no more connection to that state. Uh, even the alliances are personal based. And with a lot of mechanics like uh, the decisions that you need to make, the events that you can trigger, this game is simple fun to play through and through. However, it has a pretty steep learning curve. Not as much as other Paradox games, to be fair. Not as much, for example, as Europa Universalis or Hearts of Iron 4, but this game has a steep learning curve. But because the game has pretty good tutorial and pretty amazing tooltips that teaches you a lot of things as you go on the way, you are learning quite a lot of things yourself. And in just few hours, you will understand the majority of the gameplay mechanics. However, it will take quite a lot of time until you will understand everything. But is this game worth it? And now let's discuss the painful matter of paying for this game. So game is available on Steam for the base price of $49.99 for tier 1 countries and $22.99 for tier 2 countries and it can go as low as $33.49 for tier 1 countries and $15.40 for tier 2 countries. So as you may understand the game is well pretty expensive well compared to any other Paradox games but the reason of this is that the game is actually pretty new and still quite active in development. So is this game actually worth it any of those prices, full price or discounted? Yes, absolutely. You have played any other Paradox games or if you haven't even played any other Paradox games and you just want the strategy based on the personality and just you love the medieval periods, you will enjoy this game a lot, doesn't matter how much you'll pay for it. However, you can actually get this game for free, well for free, because the game is actually available on the Game Pass as well, and that's like actually how I started playing this game before I bought it on Steam. Yes, it was actually worth to buy on Steam. But why did I buy this game on Steam? Well, because of the same reason as every other Paradox game, and it is mods. Boy, as always with every other Paradox games, mods are transforming this game into something big and beautiful that will practically give you almost infinite amount of replayability. There are extensive catalogs of mods starting from an over small overhauls include and going to an entire total car rangers. For example, you can actually play this game in a Lord of the Rings universe with the same map, with the same characters, and with every single detail of the Lord of the Rings universe, and this is just simply a beautiful thing. It's in a similar manner, you can play many other fantasy universes, or you can actually play alternate history universes in our time, in our world. Or you can simply add some smaller additional things to this game if you just love the regular historical settings. The game is simply transforming into something huge, 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 which is insane. Now, at the moment of the recording of this video, game has game also has one major expansion which is called royal court and you probably might be interested whether you should buy this one or not and the answer is please no royal court is actually a full priced expansion it costs 30 dollars in tier one countries but it is not adding as much content as you might think it's actually adding very very little content and i would not suggest you to get it standalone if you want you can get the royal edition of this game which includes the royal court and a few other dlcs as well 
In this case, yes, Royal Edition is actually worth it to buy, but please don't get Royal Court separately unless it goes into deep, deep, deep discount. Overall, this game is simply amazing and probably this will end and I'm pretty sure this game will become the game that I will be returning over and over and over again, the same way as I'm doing with Stellaris. I'm pretty sure as the years will pass, this game will become something big and something beautiful and something amazing, transforming it into the top strategy game. And judging how many people are playing this game all the time, I'm pretty sure you will think that as well when you get this game. So go and get this game and enjoy your time with it. Well, this will be it for today. Thank you for being here with me. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this one because a lot of you are just not subscribing. And I'm going to see you in the next one. See ya.